Welcome back to the True Jordy Extra channel. Obviously, it's Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier. we got to do a quick prediction today, but also on fight night, we will be live on Twitch. Make sure when the fight's on, you're on my Twitch channel. Also, I don't usually do stuff like this, but I hooked up with BT Sport and did a video with them. Darren Till was there. Dan Hardy was there. Generally, I don't want to be on TV. I don't care. You know what I mean about that sort of thing. I don't want to be famous, but any excuse to hang out with those legends, and I, I'm going to do it. It was a great day out. Thanks to BT Sport for inviting us along. Uh, I already know I'm going to get panned in the comments. You know, all the people who th use my picture and then they're like, a focus Conor McGregor can beat Francis Ngannou and all of that. I have gotten things terribly wrong in the past. So I, I, you know, I get that as anyone who makes fight videos has. People who watch this channel regularly know the work has been done by me to be better at breaking down fights, to interview fighters better, just to be a better analyst and, and, and really try and up my game as much as I can and uh, appreciate those who've noticed that. You know, hate it or love it, I'm one of, if not the most watched fight video maker in the UK. You know, in terms of one guy, you know, I know you've got them other big channels that put out content about fighters but I'm just, it's just me talking you know for that I'm, I'm grateful I appreciate all of you lot because um, you know I do love fighting and I really care about what I do and this fight for me is a is a big one because Conor McGregor is someone who inspired me he had a dream and he went after it in a way that no, many other fighters just don't have the courage to be as bold like he he was so obvious about he has the thing I'm going to be champion from day one it wasn't you know this humble guy he called it and when someone does that and has the courage to do that it struck a nerve with a lot of people out there who probably wish they could do the same dustin poirier is very much the other kind of fighter the the hard worker the one who just grinds away and maybe doesn't have the talent of mcgregor but what he does have is work ethic drive you know never say die attitude it's going to be interesting because in that last fight, the consistency of Dustin Poirier in him being active constantly and him improving himself as a fighter showed that he was able, through the hard work, to overcome the natural talent advantage that Conor McGregor has. That was so admirable. But now, it's one apiece. McGregor knows he now has to respect Dustin Poirier. He has to take him seriously. He can't just walk forward and act like, at some point, I'm going to knock you out. Like, there needs to be a game plan this time. Because I don't think there was last time at all. To me, that's mental. You're fighting one of the best fighters in the world. And your attitude is, yeah, but I'm just so good i don't really need to think about what you do well and he fucking paid the price for years of inactivity and piss farting around flashing his rolexes on social media i know i want conor mcgregor to win this fight but i don't know how bad he wants to win this fight and that's where the interest comes from because if he loses this his days as a top fighter in the world are over don't get me wrong you know he'll be a top five fighter but for conor mcgregor that is not what this is about this is about being number one it always has been and i don't think his ego would be satisfied with just being like a nate diaz who mixes it up puts on a great show makes a lot of money but is never going to be considered number one so i want to talk about what both fighters do well and, and and not so well in that last fight i mean dustin the heart he showed not a surprise but just always believing in himself like having the confidence after a man has previously knocked you out in such a short space of time to get in there and to be in the fire with him at times just long enough to land what you want to land it takes bravery i respect them for that and when he was in the pocket he was able to bash those legs get the takedown and he, he got the takedown better than khabib did because it was so unexpected because connor was so complacent to be honest with you and then using clinch work against the cage just draining connor just enough just a little bit to take the edge off those punches and then again slowing him down with the leg kicks great game plan because whenever they did exchange in that first round it always looked like mcgregor had the edge in the boxing but dustin's belief grew and he was landing that check right hook what a game plan instead of trying to force a win and just going punch for punch with mcgregor and probably losing that battle they thought you know there's more than one way to skin a cat we drain the shoulders we we fuck the legs up and we take them apart at the seams yeah brilliant uh you know his head movement could have been better i think he was just hittable that would be my only worry for him if if you 
you know, I was doing the game plan would be you got to use more head movement because McGregor was finding you. And yeah, we didn't drop this time, but if McGregor's timing's a bit better, he's a bit more precise, that head movement's going to be necessary. As for Connor, um, look, the, the hands are always amazing. The way he can fire so accurately, but yet so quick. I mean, he's still outclassed Dustin in, in, in moments in that fight. There's just a lot of negatives. <laughs> I mean, I just don't think he tried this fight seriously at all. Turning up in a fucking yacht, being daddy daycare the whole time, pointing at his kids in the way. And I got no problem with people loving their kids, just to be clear. But I'm talking about like, bro, the, you're, you're about to go to war here. You need to be fully focused and taking this seriously. I just think the fact that he came out heavy on the lead leg, boxing style, didn't respect Dustin's ability. The, the fact that Dustin had grown so much as a fighter and he just relied totally on his boxing, pretty much. No setting up, so predictable. One other criticism would be that once he started taking the damage in terms of the punching exchanges, I mean, it was 10 seconds and it was over. So I'm also worried about how much he's willing to take in order to get the win because this is a fucking serious fight for him. You, you know, you can Billy Strut after the Khabib loss because Khabib is a fucking legend. You know, you avenge Nate Diaz and, you know, you still have to finish that off. But generally speaking, he's seen as the overall top guy in the lightweight division now by the casuals, the people who he appeals to, the people who want to buy the, the merch and all that shit. If he gets fucking two defeats back to back to Dustin Poirier that's over no one gives a fuck about you flashing your Rolex mate you are done as a top fighter in many people's eyes so this is it's time to get serious now and he's backed himself into a corner here after that first round I, I heard a little bit of what was said in the corner it only takes you up to a point so you can't hear everything from what I could hear nobody mentioned the leg kicks of Poirier nobody, nobody mentioned check the fucking kick or get the fuck out the way do something it, when he throws the leg kick go for a takedown if you you're desperate and your legs are that bad you have to think of things it was as if the corner hadn't registered that there was a problem that's another thing that worries me like is connor just the boss of his own ship far too much to where you know he, he seemed to stay in dubai this whole time during training i don't know how much he went back to dublin to train in his normal you know old school situation last time he tra trained in fucking portugal obviously that didn't look like it went great brought a new boxing coach in that was supposed to do wonders Pfft. i mean this whole situation is a bit bizarre. Going back to Connor's ability to take damage as a fighter, I remember Teddy Atlas once saying on Joe Rogan's podcast about Mike Tyson, and he said, you know what Mike's record really is? He was like, it may have read something like 50 and 5 in reality, it's 0 and 5. Because whenever anyone showed resistance to Mike Tyson, and he wasn't able to bully them, he lost. Now, I'm not saying that this is the case with McGregor, but it might be. I'm trying to think of, like, the ones who put up a fight and he carried on and still beat. I mean, Nate Diaz, yeah, he, he did win that. But when you look at the way Leon Edwards and Masvidal beat Nate Diaz, they did it a bit more definitively than that, in my opinion. So it doesn't reflect as good now. I'm concerned that Connor is a front runner and that when he is met with people who can match him in a way, we may see him fold repeatedly. I mentioned this a bit on the BT thing, but when I look at Connor now, I don't see that insecure man who has got a chip on his shoulder and feels like he's owed something out of life, that he is better than anyone believes. And that arrogance and that anger that comes with being a young man struggling with nothing and I know that feeling all too well to be honest with you although I don't have the skills of Conor McGregor I can only imagine that he can't feel the same way about life anymore the man is he's made it in ways beyond my wildest dreams how bad does he want it is he willing to have the level of training camp required to overcome Dustin is he willing to go there because I know he's got the talent I think he's the most talented fucking lightweight in the world arguably aside from Khabib but you know even Dan Hardy said it was the other day Conor's probably a a better, more well-rounded mixed martial artist. It's just that Khabib's ace card trumps Connor's. You know, that wrestling is just too good. That's how highly people rate him. And he rates himself that high, and maybe that's why he hasn't gone to the levels that Dustin has because he knew he had to. It's been five fucking years since I've really seen Conor McGregor at his best. The Eddie Alvarez fight was where everyone was like, that is as good a performance as we'll see in MMA. And when the stakes were at their highest, the two-weight world champion, five years, we as fans invested in that moment. And, and we thought 
this is the start you know like when Israel Adesanya won his title or Usman won his title you're like this is something that is the start of a real reign of excellence that we the likes of which we might never have seen before but the reality was it was the end Conor mentally that moment it was like job done really I've, I've made it I've, I've finished what I wanted to achieve here you can say there was a clear moment where his performance his drive for fighting severely diminished and people like Usman and Adesanya who relentlessly defend their title every few months they're not like that they're not complacent they're not all right mission accomplished they're like legacy I want to put together a run of dominance that no question can be asked of how good I am at the end of this and McGregor just wasn't built the same as them you know the results speak for themselves he went off he fought Mayweather obviously he lost that but he, he did fairly well in that fight considering it wasn't his fucking sport come back you know it was two years since he'd actually had an MMA fight he fought Khabib did he do well compared to what a lot of people do to Khabib ah he did actually still didn't go well generally you know what I mean lost that fight never got the chance to avenge it took another fucking two years to fight again he beats Cerrone and I mean that's not an achievement you know it just isn't it's as sad as, sad as this is I'm not being nasty Cerrone has been shot for years and then you come back and you lose to Dustin he's got more losses than he has wins in the last five years and he's only got one win since that moment and not even against a top guy when a fighter loses it's not the end of the world especially in MMA a fighter can regroup come back from its stronger like a Masvidal like we've seen even Nate Diaz has done that you know what I mean it, it's not the end of the road just because they lose a fight because they're hard and they don't quit but with McGregor like he's been getting finished it's not just defeats you know if, if you're showing the fight and the will to carry on and not give up then you've got enough left in you for another day but when you start you know the tap that could be Conor McGregor being knocked out it's like a thing I never thought I'd see and it worries me you know this reminds me a little bit of the career of Prince Nassim Hamed where he just had so much speed and skill that he just thought he could rely on it and he didn't have to train as hard and eventually it all caught up with him you know just as Nassim was a great entertainer so was McGregor and I think we may be witnessing that I, I hope we're not because McGregor is still very young and there's so much he's got left in my opinion but I'm just not sure what he is up here anymore are you the whiskey guy the businessman are you a fucking fighter what really is the true Conor McGregor part of the problem is that the blueprint to beat Conor McGregor is out there you know how many fighters can we really say at the top level you can just literally write two sentences on how to beat them and that's it it shouldn't be the case but he's showed his hand he's turned up unprepared before and allowed people to see those weaknesses you know now if you work the legs slow him down if you clinch with him get him down wrestle him and and, and get that lactic acid building up on those shoulders drag it into round two immediately your chances just went up 70 percent of winning against him and that's just what dustin knew before the last fight now he's been in there with him he's had a refresh and he's going to go away and do another game plan and i think he's going to be adding things in there that he didn't use last time something that may surprise him because i think dustin knows i can't just do the same trick now the leg kicks the cats out of the bag i gotta i gotta vary this up a little bit i gotta come with something new you know we heard connor's team saying before the last fight oh this is the best connor's ever been when when i hear stuff like that and then i say performances like that you're you're left questioning like what's going on here when words aren't aligning with performance is this working i'm certainly not saying he should leave his team but there needs to be honesty and real truthful conversations had within that camp in order to repair what went wrong the strategy needs to be so fucking different we need to see the karate kid come back the way he used to be light on his feet bouncing around counter attack you don't have to go and walk dustin down dustin has holes in his stand-up which you found despite showing him no respect despite not send setting it up set it up let Dustin come to you the way you did with Jose Aldo, right? Counter him. He will be more widely open and coming on to those fucking hard left-hand shots than if you're having to force it like he tried to last time. You know, also if he's on the back foot, he's then going to be less heavy on the lead leg, which is then going to make his likelihood of any injuries from the leg kicks not as much. You know what I mean? He'll be able to take the leg kicks a bit better. And when the leg kicks do, you know, get thrown, clatter him. Don't sit and uh, uh, allow him to fucking do that and get away with it like he did last time. It felt like he wasn't even recognizing there was a problem 
him until it was fu- his leg was dangling from his fucking knee. Also fighting on the back foot, less likely to be taken down. It just makes sense to me. But what do I know? All right, prediction time. I really believe Connor can win this fight. And if I knew for a fact that Connor was going to turn up 10 out of 10, Connor McGregor, I'd be backing him because him at his best beats Dustin at his best, in my opinion. I just don't trust Connor McGregor anymore. I don't know what the fuck's going to come because that last one, mind blowing. It, it was just bad. Do you know what I mean? And I, I believe he can put it right. I think it's obvious what he has to do. And I hope he does it. And I will be cheering him on. But with Dustin Poirier, I fucking know what I'm getting. Violence, bitch. This guy is willing to go to places that other people just aren't. Look at the Gaethje fight. Look at the Max Holloway fight. He is a dog. And I know what I'm getting with him. Not excuses. I'm getting a hard motherfucker. A one who has won seven fights and only lost one since Conor McGregor's Eddie Alvarez fight. Conor McGregor in that time has won one and lost two. That's three fights and he's lost two. Dustin, eight fights, won seven. I just have to go with the stats and the numbers here. Even though the eye test is telling me Conor is probably going to win this, I'm going to give Dustin the respect he deserves this time. And he's my pick. He's my pick to win. And I think he'll do it by a finish. But I hope I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big Conor fan, you know, and I want to see him do well. Uh, but either way, we've got a fucking great fight between two legends. I'm going to love this. I'm going to really soak this up because we never know with McGregor now. It may Every fight could be the last one. So let's enjoy it. I'll see you there on the knockout live on Twitch on Fight Night. Take care, subscribe, and I'll see you later.